Hello, good morning. My name is Mahadeva Mahesh. I'm a medical physicist. Uh, medical physics is a field of, um, which uh, bridges the gap between physics and medicine. I'm a qualified medical physicist, and I want to talk about physics topics, um, starting with this radiation dose in CT. Today I'm going to talk about on the following topics. How are CT dose measured? What are CT dose descriptors? understanding CT dose display, and what are the typical radiation dose for typical CT procedures. Let me start with explaining why the CT dose is such an important aspect right now. In this particular graph we are seeing here is the radiation exposure to US population from variety of sources. On the right hand side is a pie chart showing the radiation exposure to the US population as published in 2009 it's a snapshot data based on 2006. This data is an update on the previous published data back in 1982. If you look at the 1982 data, the majority of the radiation exposure to US population was from background. Only about 15% was for medical exposure. However, the medical exposure pie chart has increased tremendously in the past 25 years. Among them, one of the major contributor is CT dose, and that's where the emphasis about CT dose has reached a point. What I want to also want to talk about, the growth of CT procedures in the US. In this particular graph, shown here is the number of CT procedures in the US in the past 15 years. The number of CT procedures have grown linearly from 26 million procedures in 1998 all the way to eight, um, close to seven, uh, 80, 80 million procedures as of 2015. As you can see, the number of CT procedures have increased both in the hospital and non-hospital settings uniformly. Just to add an additional information, the multi-detector CT was, became commercially available in 1998, and that has led to a tremendous growth in CT procedures so is the number of CT benefits from this, uh, the new technology. To understand CT doses, it's also imperative to understand what the type of procedures we do normally in clinic. This is the data published in 2015 demonstrating the category of CT procedures. As you can see here, the majority of the CT procedures are head, chest, abdomen, and pelvic. In fact, nearly 76% of all the procedures done in the US is head, chest, abdomen, and pelvic. And there are other procedures which are beginning to show on the national data, such as CT and geography, cardiac CT, and uh, calcium scoring, and so forth. Having this in the background, I just want to discuss some basic physics of CT dose measurement. When I say CT dose measurement, um, it is imperative to start with how CT dose is measured. The first caveat is the CT dose is not measured directly on patients. Even though we express CT dose to patients, all the measurement is done using standard phantoms. Medical physicists typically use standard phantoms for measuring dose on the phantom and then extrapolate in terms of explaining to CT dose to the patient. Measurements are then used to estimate the patient dose. It is also important to see how the CT dose, the radiation dose um, distribution is different from typical radiography and fluoroscopy procedure and in CT. For example, in CT, in, in, in radiography and fluoroscopy, the entrance skin dose is highest and the dose radiation dose decreases as the as the x-rays pass to the patient. In fact, the rule of thumb is on an average, 15% of the dose gets out of the patient uh, for an average size patient. However, this is distinctly different in CT. Since CT, uh, the x-ray tube rotates around the patient, the surface dose on the patient is the maximum in CT compared to the dose in the center. In fact, many of us observe while, uh, while, uh, while reading an obese patient, the, the image is quite noisy in the center of the image. That is due to limited number of X-ray photons reaching that particular area. Physicists call it as photon starvation. 
It is important to understand the distribution of CT and how it can translate in the DC dose measurement. Ideally, the radiation dose delivered um, in CT should be like a square. If you are if you are using a 10 centimeter, 10 millimeter slice thickness, the the block of anatomy exposed on the patient should be exactly 10 millimeter, like a like a like a square or a rectangular block. However, in real world, it's not exactly like that. It is more like a like a like a bell curve. In that sense, the actual peak dose is only contributed to a small portion of this particular slice, and there is a tail end to the whole thing. Because of this, we also need to understand how the CT dose distribution plays in different sizes of the patient. That is taken into consideration when we're doing the CT dose measurement. For example, here, in a typical dose distribution in CT, for a small size such as head, pediatric, and any object smaller size, it is demonstrated that the surface dose is almost same as the central dose. So for a physicist to do a measurement on a phantom, he can do the measurement anywhere on the phantom, whether at the surface or in the central dose, it doesn't really make a difference because the surface dose is almost the same as the central dose. However, when we are looking at a larger patient, such as an abdominal dose or an abdominal size of the patient, the dose distribution is different. As demonstrated here on, a, on an abdominal phantom, the surface dose is almost twice that of the central dose. So for the CT dose, this particular distribution is accounted in a, in a formula what is called a CTDI weighted value. Weighting means basically giving a weightage on for the measurement at the surface and the measurement done at the center to, to kind of provide a uniform, like a corrected value of the CT dose done on the measurement of the phantom, which mimics what the CT dose distribution really appears. Because of that, the physicist introduced another term called CTDI weighted, which is basically a measurement on the phantom and taking the measurement done on the surface and giving a weighted value of two-thirds the value at the center, at the edges, and one-third the value at the center to accommodate what is called a CTDI weighted. We also do a lot of scans in a helical mode. When you do helical mode, the concept of pitch arrives. The pitch is defined very simply as follows. It is a ratio of the table travel divided by the actually X-ray beam width. So let's imagine a scenario. Uh, if the table is traveling at 40 millimeter per, per gantry rotation, and the beam width is also 40 millimeter, that translates to a pitch of one, which means conceptually, you are not leaving any anatomical gap. On the other hand, if the table travels quite fast and the beam width is still the same, then there can be anatomical gap that can translate to a pitch of one, greater than one. Why is this important? Because the radiation dose is proportional, inversely proportional to the pitch value. Keeping all the other factors same, if you just change the pitch, the radiation dose change accordingly in an inverse relationship. That can be explained conceptually in this particular slide where a pitch greater than one means you are basically extending this helix, leaving some gap in the anatomy that can translate to a reduction in radiation dose and also can also have other implications such as lowering the resolution and so forth. And a pitch less than one typically means it's overlapping of the anatomy that automatically translates to a higher pitch. So this is wrapped in the CT dose measurement as the following called a CTDI wall. CTDI wall is basically a CTDI weighted divided by the pitch. So conceptually, if the pitch value is less than one, means a lot of overlap, the CTDI wall will be higher. On the other end, if the pitch value is greater than one, then the CTDI value will be lesser under CTDI weighted. Up till now, I've been talking about CTDI. CTDI is a definition put out when uh, in the early 70s, what is called as computed tomography dose index. It is just an index. It is not indicating of the entire CT scan. It is a measurement done at the center of a phantom 
of a single slice. And, and that's what is called a CTDI index, index number. It, the, the unit of the CTDI is milligray or millirad and so forth. But in CT, we don't just confine to one slice, we do a number of slices. So in order to estimate the dose to the patient, we had to accommodate the actual anatomy exposed. And that's represented in what is called as dose length product. Dose length product is basically representing a total dose in terms of the total scan length. Therefore, a DLP is another dose descriptor introduced, which basically accommodates the CTDI wall multiplied by the scan length. So in this scenario here in this patient, the CTDI wall is almost same in both the patient. However, DLP is twice in the patient at the bottom because the scan length is double the scan length of the top one. In a way, why this is important? Because dose length product kind of represents the biological risk to the patient. Larger the anatomy is exposed, greater the biological risk. That's why the DLP concept is very important. So, wrapping the, all the uh, definition which I mentioned up till now, here is the one slide demonstrating what is CT dosimetry is basically. On the left hand side is CTDI 100, is basically the measurement done on a standard phantom using a 100 centimeter chamber that's called CTDI 100. From there, we, we compute what is called as weighted value, CTDI weighted, which is taking into account the distribution variation in the distribution based on the small or large patient. If the scan involves pitch, then we introduce what is called a CTDI wall. If we multiply that with the scan length, it's called dose length product. From dose length product, we arrive at an effective dose value. It is a risk estimation to the body. And to, to arrive that is a lot of mathematical simulation and uh, factors which is used, which will be part of the discussion in CT dose part two later. So as of right now, the two key dose descriptors in the CT are the following. CT computed tomography dose index, which is expressed as CTDI wall, which is expressed in milligray, and dose length product or DLP expressed in milligray centimeter. In fact, as of now, some states in the US started to introduce regulation, have already introduced regulation, where the radiologists or physicians who are reading the radio CT images are supposed to record this information in the patient chart for latter day to express some type of a risk and so forth. So it's been right now, these are the two main descriptors to remember for understanding the patient dose. From there, we can arrive at the effective dose and so forth. Having described briefly about the various uh, aspect of CT dose measurement, I just want also want to introduce the different varying factors which import, which plays a role in the CT dose and also image quality. So here described are a variety of scan parameters um, uh, which have an influencing both directly and indirectly on this image quality and also on the radiation dose. In fact, the discussion on various factors is a discussion by itself for another podcast. So how to understand some of the CT dose display? In fact, to make it easier, um, now it is important how this information is readily available on the information. For example, um, to understand CT dose display, there are two ways. One is a pre-scan display and a post-scan display. In a pre-scan display, as shown here, basically, when a technologist is setting a techniques or for a before scanning a patient, the display, there is information about the projected dose to the patient is projected here. That's because since CT dose is not measured directly on the patient, it's based on the phantom, this information is already built in as a lookup table if any of the parameters change, such as tube voltage or effective MAS, that immediately reflects back to the change in the CTDI wall. Manufacturers are becoming a lot more sophisticated in displaying this information. In fact, even tag the type of phantom measured to display at that particular value where it is arriving at. Most commonly, which uh, physicians or radiologists read, is the post-scan display. 
If you look at the thousands of CT images for a patient, one of the last image tagged to the patient study is what is called as protocol page or a dose page and so forth and that provides an insight into the type of technique used and the type of the dose descriptors we were describing earlier on this one. On this particular page showing on the bottom right hand corner is a post scan display image from a particular one particular manufacturer. Shown here toes, it provides details on scan series and scan parameters. It also tells the DLP which is then can be used effectively by a medical physicist or radiologist to arrive at an effective dose estimation. In fact, going even one, one step further, now all the images do have what is called as DICOM standard structured uh, dose report. In the DICOM header, even lot more information is available regarding CT dose. But for simplicity, looking at the post scan display image, one can arrive at the type of scan done for the patient along with um, the, the type of technique used along with the type of dose delivered to the patient from which we can arrive at some type of an effective dose value. For this part of the podcast, I am concluding here with showing some typical radiation dose for um, CT as a pro, um, protocol. These are published uh, pro information such as average effective dose for a standard protocol such as head, neck, chest, abdomen and pelvic. Um, from the date of this publication to now, some of these procedures are delivering at a, can be delivered at a much lower dose, uh, but these are the average values displayed here. To conclude this part of the podcast, the radiation dose in CT is not measured directly on the patient. It is based on the phantom measurement. The radiation dose estimates for CT exams are best expressed as CTDI wall and DLP. It is important to remember that CT dose index is not patient dose. Finally, understanding scan parameters are factors that affect dose and image quality in CT is critical. Thank you.